welcome everyone to our uh, first cook along of our Christmas series. We're doing six cook alongs this time round. Um, and today is cook along is quiche. But I'm going to first introduce our hostess, our lovely hostess, Marnie. Hi, good morning. Here we are. Come back around again. We get into lockdown. We get out of lockdown. Now I'm come out, just because of this cook along, I'm come out of hibernated. And the reason that why I put the makeup on this morning. Yeah, thank you. Saturday morning. I have to put the makeup on and pretend that I'm going to work again. So, but anyway, I'm so pleased that we uh, come back together again for six sessions of Christmas cook along. Just leaning intensely towards the Christmas day. And today we have a very solid, special contributor that she's always been here. And I love her so much because of her ethos and mantra of uh, working and try to get the message out there. It's Becky Mias. Hi, Becky. Good morning. Welcome to my um, kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, uh, would you mind tell me about your, uh, yourself a little bit then, please? Yes. Um, so I um, manage, so well, I, 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 I am the owner, director of a social enterprise that is all about getting people eating local seasonal produce. Um, so it's called Season Well, and it's, our role is to inspire people and enable people to eat seasonally so eat what's in season so it's much better for the environment and it also means that we're getting much tastier food that's not traveled miles that's been grown locally, and that's eaten when it's at its best and it's at its most nourishing so um so i i work with people i work with organizations i help them set up their own food growing programs or i or just coming in to help them set up cooking programs i also deliver cooking workshops and do tips uh, for how you can be growing your own food. Yeah, and, and this skill is very important at the moment as well because we can't go to restaurants at the moment, can we? So we have to learn how to cook and what is better than cook something that actually you can produce it yourself or produce it by from your um, local farmer, which is brilliant. What are you going to teach us today? So today we are starting off the Christmas season with what I call my party quiches. So they are little mini quiches. Sorry, I'm just organising my table as I talk to you. They are little mini quiches that are going to be made in a pipe tin. Um, the beauty of these is no blind baking because they're so small, you can just fill them and bake them and they're done in 20 minutes. So hopefully we will get our quiches done and we can see what they look like within our, within our cook along. Um, and then the fillings are seasonal. So they're seasonal as in we're using what's in season, but I've also added some seasonal Christmassy twists as well. So um, I'll just talk you through the fillings. And I've noticed that I'm missing a main ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, that we thought that we start on the ingredients so people can just sort of get their head together and, you know, uh, know what do they have to prepare. So uh, what are the ingredients for the fillings, please? So the fillings, we are going to be using kale. Um, kale was picked yesterday from my Ooh. community uh, garden. So that's uh, pretty fresh and pretty local. Um, I've got a mixture of curly kale and um, Cavallonero here, the black kale. So we're going to be oh, using. Wow. Um, we're also going to be using. Um, I've got a couple of homegrown shallots here. Okay. Um, I've also got a red onion because I think that will add some nice colour. <laughs> and yes. I've got some thyme. Again, this was picked yesterday. And thyme is a great winter herb because thyme will grow all the way through the winter. Um, I'm going to use a bit of parsley, which again was picked yesterday. Parsley is still growing and I've actually brought my parsley inside for the winter. So hopefully I'll get parsley all over the winter. And then I'm using some dried thyme. No, not thyme. Some dried sage. But the sage is actually going with a different filling. So with the kale, we're going to be using shallots. Some nice chestnut mushrooms. Ooh. 
um, and some garlic. Oh, forgot the garlic. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a big fat clove of garlic. My garlic again is homegrown. So garlic. Garlic is if you plant some garlic now, now's the time for planting garlic. You it will be start coming up um in spring. It needs to get cold first. So and you can even plant just the, the bulbs that you buy from the supermarket. Um so there you go. So that's going to go in one one filling and another filling. Um, okay. Sorry, can I interrupt you? Um, I just want to ask you a question about garlic, because um, I grow elephant um, garlic, but I leave it in and just take up bits when I want it. But when you're planting garlic, so you say now's a good time of year to plant it. How deep do you plant it? Um, you deep about about that deep. <laughs> so okay. it's not poking through the soil like an onion. Not poking through the soil like an onion, no. Okay, thank you. I'm sure there are other people might be interested. It's not a cooking thing, but thank you. No, I'll tell you what I will do is I'll put up some garlic sewing tips on my website later today. Um, that would be great, actually, because um, obviously I'm from Thailand. It's not Thai, it's, it's cooked without the garlic, really. So it would be nice if I could grow my own garlic, really. I never think that you can grow garlic in England. <gasps> Absolutely, and it likes it likes to get cold. Um, so so now's the time to sow it. So yes, I will put up some garlic growing tips either today or tomorrow. Um, so yeah, right. So that's the one filling, and then because one filling is never enough, I'm also going to use some roasted pumpkin, and this is a homegrown pumpkin. So it started off like this. <laughs> Oh, that looks so cute. I know, it's really cute. So homegrown pumpkin, now it's a roasted pumpkin. And I literally just, um, this is half the pumpkin. Um, it's not actually, it was less than half the pumpkin. Peeled, um, chopped up and roasted for about half an hour in the oven. Okay, and then with the pumpkin, I'm going to put in some cranberries, some dried cranberries. Oh, that is very Christmassy. And some blue cheese. So I've gone for Yorkshire blue cheese. Just because. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Right. So um, what I asked you to do... Um, oh, yeah, and then obviously for the custard, we are going to be using... I'm going to make two custards today. I'm going to make a, a standard custard, which is using cream... Um, I've already measured out my cream because I'm only making half as much because the other half I'm going to do is a vegan one. So I've got I've got cream in here. So I'm saying to you to use 200, um, so 125 millilitres of cream. Um, then milk, uh, 250 millilitres. I've got less. <laughs> and then eggs. Um, I've told you guys to use three eggs. I'm just using two because I'm going to also make some um, vegan filling. And then you'll just need nutmeg if you've got it. I've got some nutmeg to grind. If you haven't, don't worry about it. Yes, you've got nutmeg. <laughs> um, salt and black pepper. Just realised I'm missing those. Don't worry. <laughs> and then, is anybody here wanting to do the vegan version? No, no not me. No, because I didn't have time to go out and chopping a bit of those vegan cream. But uh, I was interested, but I'm not doing it. Well, but I would to, like yeah. to. I would like to know how you do it. I, I would love to know how to do it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So for the vegan version, we are using tofu. So get a nice firm tofu. Firm one. Firm tofu. A firm tofu. Yeah. And what I'm actually doing is I'm pressing it to get as much liquid out as possible. So I've wrapped it in some muslin and I'm just weighing it down. Um, yeah, well, that, that is a good way. Yeah. I'm going to go the other way. Um, I'm going to use some chorizo and some bacon and do like a meaty version. Excellent. <laughs> are you going to put that in with any veg or are you just going to chorizo and bacon? Um, I thought I'd wing it as soon as we start doing the fillings. Yeah, marvellous. Do you have any veg around you? Any veg? I've got some spinach. Marvellous. <laughs> all the herbs and the mushroom. 
garlic. And actually, I've done some, I had a butternut squash that was growing in the garden. Oh, really? It didn't turn yellow, but it was um, chopped it. Okay. Hi. <laughs> like you, Nick, I'm going to do some a meat and a vegetarian one. I've got some bacon lardons that I've already cooked off, but I am going healthy. I've got some nice kale that I blanched, um, and I've got Shropshire blue cheese, which is a really nice cheese, and lots of other fresh herbs as well. Oh, that is brilliant. Look like it's a good combo there. Could I go come back to Nick? So uh, you've got tomatoes and you've got ham, am I correct? Do you have to cook it first? I don't know. Well, the butternut squash I had, yeah, I've roasted it. So yeah, I've how about it. those meat? Sorry, Marnie? Do you have to cook tomatoes first and those meat? <laughs> Who knows? Answer me, please. You won't need to cook your chorizo because your chorizo is already, because um, it's a preserved um, meat, it won't need cooking, it can just go in. Um, is it cooked ham? Um, I haven't got ham. I've got some bacon that I've not cooked yet, but I think I can pop that in with the onion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your bacon will need cooking, but your chorizo can just go in. Um, so, um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't. I'm trying to think if I have made these uh, because I, I, I make these mini quiches for when I do tea parties because um, before I started to season well um, I had a business called the Travelling Tea Ladies I still do have a business called the Travelling Tea Ladies and we do afternoon tea parties for events so this is a popular um, afternoon tea party How thin are you rolling this? Um, I'm rolling it thin <laughs> yeah. because I don't like thick pastry. So that's how thin I'm reeling it. <laughs> okay, so do we have to turn the oven on for some people that haven't turned oh, the oven on, on yet? Oven on. Put your oven on to 180. And if you haven't rolled out your, your um, pastry, start rolling it out now. Um, because these are only little pieces, you do want your pastry fairly thin. Otherwise, your quiches will be all pastry and not enough filling. Um, and then you are going to use a, a, you know, I've measured this beforehand and now I've forgotten uh, what size cutter it is. And now I've lost my, it's, it's three and a half inches, I think. I was just going to say three and a half inches is what I use for my deep oh, building size. Thank you, Karen. Yes, okay. three and a half inches. <laughs> <laughs> you've come for you've come to be a consultant <laughs> consultant that's fun <laughs> right, is anybody at the cutting out stage or is it just me yeah it's me as well i haven't got the those mini one so i make the like a cake thin one i'm not sure it's brilliant one. um right you're gonna make a big one are you marnie yeah i like it big okay <laughs> <laughs> For those of you doing little ones. What tea, Vicar? You need to um, grease and flour your pie tin. Um, I used to just grease them, but sometimes they get stuck and then they're an absolute beggar to get out. So um, I am now greasing and flouring mine. So if you're using a pie tin, grease and flour. If you like, is anybody else doing a big quiche or is that just Marnie? Well, I do both. I've got the, both. I've only got 12 of those. Right. Okay, doke. Um, <laughs> you will need then, if you're doing a big quiche, you'll need to blind bake it, won't you? Mm. Oh, what is blind baking? Uh, one of the reasons why I do little ones is to avoid having to blind bake. Karen. Hello. Yes. Blind so, so blind baking is um is to prevent the soggy bottom that we've all heard about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you just get a large amount of pastry in a large tin and put the filling in it, the filling will be cooked before the pastry is cooked. 
therefore the pastry will be soggy. So yeah. blind Nobody baking. Nobody wants a soggy bottom, do they, Nobody, Karen? nobody mm. wants one. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> So you need you need to basically bake the pastry first and you weigh it down. So you put you line your pastry case and you get some greaseproof paper or tin foil and weigh that paper or tin foil down with some baking beans, rice, dried pasta, something like that, and bake it for 10 or 15 minutes before you take the beans out and add the filling so that you won't have a soggy bottom. Okay, thank you. I'll do it now. Well, what, what, we, we are doing our pastry first because once we've put our pastry in our tins, we are going to put it in the fridge to chill. Now, yeah. if you're doing a big quiche and blind baking it, Karen, I'm going over to you now, do you need to chill it first? Yes, well, you, if you want a really nice one, because I always, I, I found this to my, uh, to my peril, that if you don't chill the pastry when it's lined in the tin first then it tends to shrink have you ever have you ever seen pastry that sort of mm. looks nice and full and then when it's baked it's plopped down yeah. that's that's because the pastry is too warm and the butter in the pastry is already warm so it goes into a hot oven and it sort of just melts down yeah. so the idea is that you roll your pastry line your case or whatever, whatever tin you're using chill it for 10 minutes even and that will firm up the butter in the pastry. So the science is there that when you take the cold pastry out with the cold butter, put it into the hot oven, it won't just immediately go poof, down. It'll stay in the um, shape that you want. So yeah, you need to chill it ideally. Thank you, Karen. I'm so glad you came this morning. <laughs> well, I never did. <laughs> I like this one. Brilliant. <laughs> so, but so, so don't you do it like you can do a big one, but you'll have an extra stage. You're going to chill it, and then you'll need to blind bake yours. But that's fine. That's fine. So, I can see people are. The idea is that you cut your. Well, not the idea, but what you need to do is cut your pastry, and then just pop it. The pop the pastry rounds into your pie tin. I'm sure you've all made mince pies before, she says. Have you all made mince pies before? Uh, yes. <laughs> you will you on the jam 19th. Yeah. When, you were, when you were a kid, when you were a kid, did you make jam tarts? Yeah. yeah. When you were jam tarts, well, it's just the same. Okay. Yeah. Don't well, worry. I've got what happened yesterday, Karen. Pardon? Yeah, what happened yesterday? Never mind. Ah, uh, yeah. What happened when you were a child? <laughs> <laughs> what I mean about pastry is pastry is actually a lot more forgiving than people think. As long as you do the thing about chilling it, you can stick your thumb in it. You can mould it to the shape you want. If it's not quite big enough for your pastry tin, just squeeze it up. Fingers. If you get a bit too much, just cut it off. If you get a hole, if one of them breaks, it's a bit too thin, just patch it up with a bit of pastry. Pastry is not as temperamental as we think it is, as long as we do the things that Karen's described to us so brilliantly. Mm. Um, and chill it. That's correct. <laughs> I think I used, to have ter I used to have terrible pastry failures but years ago before I started concentrating and pastry like like you say Becky it's fine as long as you follow a couple of rules and I, I, what, what, in the making of the pastry I find that the addition of liquid is the the thing you've got to be quite precise mm -hmm. with how much liquid you add otherwise you've got a pastry that won't roll out for one of two reasons either it's cracked because it it's not wet enough or it's too wet and it's sticky mm -hmm. Get and I, do you know, Karen, that's the hardest thing I think about, about making pastry is that, you know, every pastry is a basic recipe, um, although I do adulterate mine, I've got herbs and par, um, pecorino in mine today, but, you know, when you add the liquid, it's, I find that the hardest thing to gauge, how much liquid do you put in? I, I, it, yeah. completely, I, I've got a foolproof, I've got a, a, a recipe and it uses one egg 
and that's the liquid. But, so I think, I, I can't remember whether it's 100, 200 grams of flour maybe, and whatever it is, I'll have to check it. But I just used one egg and it, that makes a rich pastry, but at least I'm not measuring water out. Well, I would say that the, my, my, my um, um, tip is, because I am not the precisest of people, um, is add the water slowly. And it does really work making it in a food processor. Quite often, I do. I like to do things by hand because I like to feel what's going on. But with pastry, it's so much easier doing it in a food processor. Yes. <laughs> water really slowly. Drip and by drip. Around. And as soon as it starts to bind together, you know that's enough and you don't need to add any more. So it's it's... It's, it, kind of, it's correct. I completely agree with you there. Drip by drip yeah. into the funnel. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for me, when I'm doing baking classes, I've got to show everybody by scratch because we have to work on the assumption that not everybody has the, the machinery. Yeah. So that's more difficult. But if you've got a food processor, yeah, I used it. Yeah, so how is everyone with the pastry? Almost there. Uh, Brilliant. Well, I have a little confession. On the pastry front. Oh, um, oh excellent. Oh, ben. Ooh, there we go. Ben. Ben, is it homemade Thank pastry? you. It is, yes. I made it yesterday, put it in the fridge. I've got some mini ones and some medium ones. I'm guessing this isn't your first uh, piece then, is it? No. <laughs> I haven't made any on the barbecue, though, before. But, uh... <laughs> if you're... It, once, yours, once yours is done, I'm only doing 12 because I did 12 earlier. Um, and I've gone for a mixture of some of mine are wholemeal pastry and some of mine are just the, the normal standard pastry. Cover it either with cling film or I've got a wax beeswax wrap mm -hmm. and pop it in your fridge. And then that can just be chilling while we are making <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I've kind of used a different kind of pastry. What have you used? In the shop, they have puff pastry. So what? No way! You've it's got puff pastry? Puff pastry? Puff pastry. Puff pastry. Puff pastry. Puff pastry. You know what? It's always Nick, isn't it? <laughs> I like a rebel. It'll be interesting to see how yours turn out. We might have to call yours something else. We might have to call them. <laughs> Tart -ta -tan. Just put put your custard in the bottom and put your pastry on the top. <laughs> right. So, is everybody ready to move on to their fillings? Yes, I am ready. Right. So, I'm enjoying this. It's wonderful to watch. <laughs> <laughs> already done yours for those of you who have already chopped your kale you can start so what I'm, I'm doing and I hope you've done this as well is I'm removing the main ribs because they will just take too long to cook um, yeah. I'm not blanching mine who is blanched there that was something I thought well that's a good idea I'm using spinach shall I take a bit of the stock off it or <laughs> but you, you can the spinach stalk off quickly so it's not as important but just take any scraggy ends off um, and I've got a, a stray broccoli leaf in mine lovely now um, you yes I blanched mine um, I just ran it in hot water for about a minute yeah. on the stove then I put it in a sieve and refreshed it with cold water yeah. that keeps the colour does it it does, yeah, keeps that vibrancy yeah. and uh, gives still keeps a little bit of firmness. Yeah, mm -hmm. so and bite. Yours, will, 
you, you can, I'm going to fry mine. Um, and have you got kale or score, or have you got spinach? I'm sorry, I keep missing it. He's gone again, I can't see you. Who, I've missed your name. Who's, who's done this? Ben. Ben, 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 Ben. Yes. Ben, are you going to then put yours in the quiches as it is, or are you going to fry it as well? Yeah, I'm going to keep it as it is. How about Victoria? What do you use? What is your filling? So, um, I've got kale from the garden. Excellent. Um, roasted squash from the garden as well. Um, sage, garlic, and red shallots, all from the garden. Um, I've got some cranberries that aren't, and some lardons for a, a non veggie option. Brilliant, that sounds so good. It's so nice, isn't it? Oh, this one, I got it from the garden. And this one, I got it from the garden. I know, doesn't it uh, sound wholesome? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it sounds like, oh, I just got me out. I just missed to the Tesco. It's my next year. We'll all have you all growing things in the garden. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I tried beetroots last year in planters and it failed. Oh, okay. why did you say that one, Karen? I don't know. Probably because they were dip, maybe dip, we didn't. I bought them as small plants from the garden centre, yeah. and we've all, we haven't got a garden that's big enough to plant in the ground. So my husband made some troughs, yeah. and I, I, I don't think we maybe planted them deep enough because the, the as they grew they were. Out, extruded out of the, you could see them basically, and they were like really hard and not juice. There was no juice or moisture in the in the beetroot. Yeah. Is that to do with the water con water content or it was too dry? Yeah. Well, the, the, what the, the the soil was too dry because they're in a pot. Yeah. They get they won't get as much moisture. Pots dry out a lot more, so they probably need more water. Yeah, probably. And of course, if we go away from home for a couple of weeks, yeah. you know, a, yeah. a caravan or something, and then they don't get any rain, they've had it, haven't they? Yeah, it's a shame. So, uh, well, you know, we can try again. Yes, I will, because I found that I found that um, the supermarkets sold. Be I love beetroot, and I I found the supermarkets yeah. were quite expensive. Um, yeah. Now the cheaper supermarkets are selling them like a little Naldi for about fifty odd pence, which is great. But you know, when you were paying one pound seventy five, two pound for three beetroots, it was a bit off putting. So I thought, well, I'll grow my own. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're trying to get yeah. like this. I love beetroot soup. Do, do, do people make beetroot soup? I did it with um, horseradish um, the other day, and it was delicious. I once did when I was in Weight Watchers. I did that the other day. I made a beef stew, and I'd got. I found I'd got two little beetroots left, and they were getting a bit wizened. And I put those in, and it made the gravy a beautiful burgundy colour. It would do, yeah. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> well, I have a. So where, where are we now at the moment? <laughs> Moving on. I was about to start telling you about my Polish husband then, but um, yeah. <laughs> We, I have just put some uh, rapes oil in my frying pan. I have chopped up my onions and my garlic. And I'm going to cook down the onions and the garlic first. And then I'm going to actually take out some of those red onions so, so those can go with my butternut squash. Um, and the rest will stay with the kale. So, right. so we're going to start cooking our, our yeah. um, heating my oil. That sounds good. How about Christy? What are your fillings? Oh, I've got a food? few because I've got these 12, you know, it's a 12 um, muffin tin. Yes. So I have got, um, I've got a little bit of bacon to keep the man happy. Um, I've got <laughs> garlic, shallots and mushrooms. Um, I've got a Mediterranean, I had a butternut squash that my friend grew for me. So I've done butternut squash, okay. onions, peppers, and uh, sun-dried tomatoes in that one. And then I've got um, cabbage and courgettes and sweet potato. Oh, wow. 
fantastic. So, are you, have you got all those, which of those have you got already cooked, Kitty? Yeah, I roasted the, the Mediterranean veg yesterday. Yeah, that is brilliant. I can't believe it. Kids can be so versatile. You can put pretty much anything, really, and that is good. What I'm, uh, this is my fillings. I made it yesterday. I roast um, the vegetable in um, Thai side cream curry paste. I oh, just want to make it a little bit more, you know, put a little bit of spice in it. So um, I'm just going to be, I, I don't know how is it going to turn out. <laughs> I hope it's all right. Thank you, Shizmani. You're doing the Thai version. Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I, I I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but hey ho, <laughs> it will be okay. <laughs> I hope it will be all right. I had a Thai curry vegan pasty from a shop the other day, and it was very nice. So I'm sure your mm -hmm. uh, quiches will be equally nice. Um, what I really like about this is that it do it yourself. Once you've got the fillings made. Um, it can be a bit of a do-it-yourself party, party treat. I did this with, um, I've done this with cooking classes as their Christmas uh, party food. And everybody gets to put in their own toppings, which you can do with the kids. Um, and especially if you have any kids that are reluctant veg eaters, <laughs> you get to choose your own toppings you're a bit more likely to own filling you should I say you're a bit more likely to eat it yeah this is it isn't it when you get kids involved to do the cooking with you yeah. they tend to do they tend to appreciate what they made and they want exactly. to exactly you know, right I have a few of my red onions and putting them in with my chopped up um roasted okay. pork. And then, season with any salt and pepper? Not yet. <laughs> no. Okay. So what what are the ingredients in that pan again? Let's see, sorry. So now in my pan I've got I've got some two shallots, about half a red onion, and uh, one clove of garlic, and I have just added a large handful of kale. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Nick. You have plenty of kale left in your garden, haven't you? So. Yeah, I don't really like kale. Oh, oh, Nick. Nick. <laughs> don't like kale. Make kale crisps, Nick. Yeah. Because then you I can. Tasty. Yeah, it's so good for you, isn't it? But yeah, I have to admit sometimes I don't know what to do with kale. I look at kale and think, should I put in the blender and do like a green smoothie juice or something like that? Because sometimes I find it quite um, chewy when they cook it. Say that again, quite chewy, yeah. Well, basically, I would say about kale is that you can use it anywhere you would use spinach, but it just takes longer to cook. So ah, okay. It's, you know, we'll use it like we do spinach, but it's going to take longer, whereas spinach wilts down in minutes. Kale just needs a little bit longer. Um, what's great about kale is that it grows all the way through winter. It's a cut and come again vegetable. So you can go out and take the leaves as and when you want it. Um, and it will just keep growing and it will grow all the way through winter. You can even go into the garden in the frost and your kale, you can go and pick your kale. What's Ben doing? Yeah, look, ben? Uh, very what are you doing? there, Ben. I'm <laughs> just frying off some chopped onions and garlic. Okay. Then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna do two different quiches. I've, I've got the blanched kale. Um, I've got some chopped, um, cranberries, the dried ones. Um, I've got some fresh parsley, thyme from the garden, sage leaves, and um, the nutmeg. 
and um, the Shropshire blue cheese. So I'm going to divide it up and do two different nice quiches. Marvellous. The nutmeg needs is best going in your custard. So Marnie, you were asking me about salt and pepper. I will put salt and pepper and nutmeg in my custard. Okay. Um, uh, um, which is we going to do in a minute? I presume after we cook the um, everything. Now, whilst the kale is cooking. All right. Okay. So. Um, I'm just going to just to say, have a little bit of liquid handy because your kale might just need. If it starts to catch, you might just want to add a little drop of water or a little drop of stock to it to stop it from catching. Okay, so um, Becky, would you like to talk us through about this uh, liquid filling? Hang on a minute. No, no, no. Hang on a minute. Uh, I've forgotten the mushrooms. Who's All using... right, sorry. <laughs> Who's using mushrooms? Right, Christine. The mushrooms need to be chopped up fairly small because I'm dicing the mushrooms. I don't know if you can see. This is one of the music oil out of the way. Because these are mini quiches, everything needs to be fairly small that goes in them. Ah, that makes sense, isn't it? So everything will look like nice and pretty and look, look like oversized as well. Yes. So I am dicing, I'm dicing about four mushrooms here, but then again, it depends on what size your mushrooms are. I'm going to put the mushrooms in, and then while those are cooking down, we will make the. the <laughs> so your kale's already in the pan, is it, Becky? Kale's in the pan because we're going to take long to cook. I am actually cut some more pastry because I have a lot of pastry left. Yeah, and I might just, um, because of Karen just mentioned about jam tart, I might just make jam tart as well in the same time. Go for it. Because <laughs> it's, a, it's a pastry that can be used either savoury or sweet. Mine can't. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've got cheese and, and herbs in mine. Oh, maybe not the herbs, you could have got away with the cheese. So here's what is in my pan at the moment. And I'm just cooking that down. I'm, putting, I'm going to go in with a pair of scissors just to make sure that my kale pieces are nice and small. Because you don't want to bite into a mini quiche and just have a big piece of kale hanging out of your mouth. <laughs> How is Victoria doing? <laughs> Brilliant! So you you remind me there. <laughs> you um, remind me of that movie. <laughs> that <laughs> movie. Um, but I've got my butternut squash and cranberries and sage in the pan here. I've already done my kale. So I'll put that in the lardons. So have you cooked your lardons? Yes. Yep. Yeah, they're all done. Marvellous. Right, and I have put thyme in with my, um, with the kale and the mushrooms, and I've got some chopped uh, parsley, which I will put in at the end. Right, is everybody ready to make the custard now? Yeah. So, or oh, just get the salt and pepper, sorry. Right. So custard is really simple. <laughs> All you need to do is crack your eggs into a, a jug. A jug is the best thing to use because then you can actually pour it into your pastry. Mm -hmm. So you'll be using three eggs, I'm using two. And then whisk up your eggs.
You know, I always want Let's... to make peace, and today is the day. Oh, marvelous! <laughs> because usually I just buy it from supermarket. So um, yeah, really looking no forward. Need for it. Oh. Yeah, no need anymore. Marley, have you cut yourself a piece of greaseproof paper for you to blind make yours? Yeah, I'm, I'm blind. What is the English word? I'm baking it already. So oh. I will say in about two or three minutes, it will be ready. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm just so, um, so what did you just put? You mix the egg and what did you put? Did you put the cream in it? In your I put the cream in and I've added the milk. So basically, I will just bring up. The eggs, cream and milk. We've got about 500 milliliters in total liquid there. Mm. Fine, doesn't it? Yeah. I've got 400, but I'm only doing. Yeah, two about. Thirds. Yeah, I'm just trying. So I'm doing two thirds, so people should have about six, 500 to 600 milliliters. Yeah. Yeah, spot on, Karen. Mine is 500 milliliters. Okay. Mm. And then I am grating in. Some nutmeg. Um, I use the powder one. Um, would that's you recommend? That's fine. Just put um, in about about quarter of a teaspoon. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to put a little bit of that in. Just going to put a little bit of that in. Just going to put a little bit of that in. Just going to put a little bit of Little bit of salt. I'm not putting too much salt in because there's going to be cheese in one of the fillings. So I am going to add a little bit of extra salt to the kale and mushroom. Are you going to be explaining to us about the vegan custard? Because I'm fascinated. Yeah. What I thought I would do, Karen, is I'll get these in the oven and then yeah, while we've got Cooking, I'll then show people how to make the vegan custard. Perfect. Lovely. Mm -hmm. So, I know. well, in all of these, I'm thinking to use cheaper goods. What was that, Nick? I find that cheese works well in all quiches. I'd imagine it's good for both recipes or. as a ubiquitous, oh, let's put some cheese in. Then yeah. I'm not going to put any cheese into the um, kale and mushroom one because I don't think it needs it. Um, if you wanted to, the cheese that I would put in, this one would be feta. Mm. A little bit of goat's cheese would be nice. But not everybody likes cheese. <laughs> so I like... Especially if you're a vegan. Well, yes. if you're a vegan, yeah, they definitely wouldn't be. <laughs> I, I tend to try and avoid vegan cheese. I think it's just horrid. I think <laughs> I get the flavour through something else than those, like, weird cheeses. <laughs> but, you know, each to their own. Um, so, my filling is just about ready now. So, I'm going to switch the ring off and just shove it a little bit out of the way. Um, I'm going to stick in the parsley into the um, in, into the kale and mushroom. And I'm also going to put a little bit of parsley in with the butternut squash just to get the greenness. And then the other herb that's going into, because these are Christmas quiches, so I'm trying to make them look Christmassy. Um, that's why I'm going for the red and the, the red onion and the green. Um, and then the other herb that I'm going to put in the um, with the butternut squash is some sage. You can use dried sage or fresh sage. <laughs> sage, you can say butternut squash, but it's not. Mine's pumpkin, actually. Um, but some of you have got squash, haven't you? Uh, sage goes really, really nicely with squashes and pumpkins. 
So um, I'm actually using <laughs> dried fresh sage, if that makes sense. It's my own sage that I picked <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, and now it's dry. Uh, sage leaves just dry really easily. So I'm just crumbling them up, and I'm going to put a little bit of, I've got about three sage leaves going in there. Um, Is this the one that you're putting the blue cheese in with? Yes, but some of it's not going to have blue cheese in it. Yeah, no, I just I just remember doing a recipe last year that it was pumpkin based, and I I use blue cheese and sage, so yeah. it must be yeah. They just they just they are you know flavours that just classically go together. Yeah. Um, what I've done for the vegan one, I completely forgot. I'm glad you asked that, Karen. Is I um I roasted some pumpkin the other day. Uh, this was yesterday. Um, and I roasted it in, a, I don't know if you can see that, it's a bit blurry, isn't it? I roasted it in a miso um, dressing because I wanted to get a bit of umami in there. Um, if you didn't that, have miso, could, what could you use instead? Yeah, I never... Soy. Soy or marmite? Could you use marmite? Um, you could that... try it. Try it and see, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> So I've never had any miso, miso anything. I don't know anything about it. Well, miso is 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 it's a fermented soya paste. Ah, brings right. a, a, a rich umami flavour, but then yes. so soy sauce. So what I what I did was I made a little marinade out of um, soy sauce, um, miso, and yeah. a little bit of maple syrup. And, rub that and, where, and where, where can you buy easily, buy this miso paste? Do you know, you can get it in the supermarket now. Um, I used to get it from the Chinese supermarket in town, you know, um, on Brigger, to the end of Brigger in Leeds. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there's a Chinese supermarket up there. And um, they, sell, they sell it really cheap there. <laughs> but you can also get it now from Morrison's. In right. Their, in their you have to get Lovely. Nicely Morrison's, Karen. Okay, thank you. <laughs> really local. <laughs> yeah. Right, so now is the time to discard things that are in the way and go, right, we are ready to assemble our quiches. Do it. Yeah, why well, I'm, um, look at you guys adding some dry spice. So what did I do? I'm just going to do a little bit of experiment here. So I got this uh, Thai seven spice from a Flavor King band. And um, I'm just going to put about a quarter of teaspoon in, in my custard mixture. So hopefully it can give uh, a little bit of Thai aroma in my... I'm excited. I want to taste your quiche. I think we'll have to it's, it. it's really nice, that seven spice. And what's great about it, I call it fresh because it's been ground and roasted yeah. probably a three or four weeks ago. You know, the majority of dried spices you buy in the supermarket could, could be two years old. But that's fresh, you know, and it gives it a lovely colour and great taste to everything you're cooking. So what spices? Yeah, the... Seven oh, spices. Yeah, I read it on here. There's um, cumin, chilli, coriander, turmeric. Fernu Greek, I haven't heard of them. Ginger, celery, cloth, salt. It's more than seven. <laughs> Paprika, it's lots. And, and they have a little bit of citric acid, which is very important in Thai, um, thai uh, cooking as well. A little bit of what? Citric acid. Um, citric acid, which is add a little bit of um, sour net acidity. Right. Yeah. Which is very important. Um, that's interesting. I've got a bag unopened in my cupboard. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 So we will see. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Oh. Well, I'm going to get my quiches out of the fridge. So oh, Ben, what have you been up to at the moment? How's uh, I guess you're not barbecuing much in winter. No, um, I hibernate this time of year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I've I've just set up a new business um, selling hampers. Oh, 
especially barbecue hampers and tools. Ah. So, yeah, I, I, it's quite fun. I've got, you know, loads of tools and my books and the barbecue rubs. So I've just put them all together and I've set up a new barbecue hamper website. And uh, here's one I prepared earlier. Hey. So uh, there we go. Uh, I'm this, yeah, this one is um, just based around my books. So I'll sign them for anyone. And it comes with the barbecue buddy rubs. And I've got bigger ones with the tools. And I've got an ultimate barbecue uh, one. This one's about, I think, £25. But my ultimate one is £195. And it comes... Do you get a free barbecue with it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, it comes... It comes with with a briefcase barbecue. Oh, I've that's seen great, that great. I've seen it. Yes, it's they're they're great for um, camping and you know festivals. I'll get one and show you a bit later. Oh, that's fantastic. Well done. Thank oh, you. Look, she's filling her quiches. Right, Becky. Come on. What are we doing? So whilst Teddy was doing his barbecue, um, <laughs> and I, I was starting to fill my quiches. So the mix of kale mushroom and shallot just get a teaspoonful and pop it in the middle of your pastry case um so you put the um solid type of the filling first before the custard is you made. put the filling first before the custard so, what about your cheese, Becky? Yeah, and then in the middle ones, so I've gone for, um, you, I'm putting in the sweet potato, and then I already have the cheese crumbled up. I am adding a couple of lumps of the lovely blue cheese to... On top of the filling? Well, so that's in amongst the filling. I've left the middle gap, so I'll show you. I've left the middle gap, so I can pop it in amongst. Let me just show you what I've done. Oh, blue cheese. This is my downfall for trying to be dairy free. Blue cheese. I don't know what I'm going to do about my Christmas cheese board this year. So, can you see? I've just sort of pushed it in amongst the filling. That's been quite full, actually, then, Becky. Yep. I think that's a lovely idea having the chunks there because I'm always, I always end up grating cheese in, of course, and then you don't actually get a bite of the cheese. And then you, yes, you yes. will with that. Yeah. I might just have to taste some of these. I am I am only vegan-ish. <laughs> Part-time vegan. <laughs> yes, I try. Right, and then once you've popped all your fillings in, and be generous, be generous. Nobody wants to say a stingy quiche at this time of year. <laughs> we are then pouring in your custard. Now, don't be too generous with your custard. You want to try and keep your custard within the pastry case because if it spills out, and it will do, <laughs> it just makes it harder to get the um, cases out of the bun tin because the custard welds it to the tin. And then you have to eat those. Okay, <laughs> be generous with the filling, but not the custard. Okay. Yeah, generous with the filling, not generous with the custard, exactly. Your aim is that it covers the filling, but if you have some little bits of cheese poking through or some filling poking through, that's absolutely fine. Be quiet. Because you actually, you want, when you pop these on a plate, you want the colours to, to shine through. You want to be able to see the... Um, oh, do you know what I forgot to put in? I forgot to put in any dried cranberries. <laughs> So I, them I, I think I'm going to be willy-nilly with my dried cranberries and I'm not going to particularly stick to one recipe or another. I think I'll just do some with dried cranberries and some without. Oh, they look so Christmassy with the kale. Lovely. Nice idea, that cranberry in there. Yeah, I, I quite like a little bit of sweet and savoury. Mm -hmm. The other half so that's hence why some will and some won't. Oh, T, be quiet. 
Who are you talking to, Chrissy? Oh, it's the cat. She's crying because she can smell the cheese and the bacon. <laughs> oh, that it is. <laughs> oh, she's such a pain. <laughs> Bless her. She's done right, really. I will cry as well if I can uh, smell some cheese and bacon. <laughs> Right, so I am putting mine in. She says, not quite ready. I'm still filling right, mine. Right, they're going in. All I'll right. My oh. We're going in. Going in. <laughs> going in. I started saying that to my husband now, Karen. <laughs> It's catchy. Yeah. Right, I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Shh. Oh, no, we can all hear the clock, the, um, the cat. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to have to put her away in a minute. She's like, it's all right. It's quite nice. Yeah, it's quite nice, really, to hear the cat behind, you know. She's, she's loud because she's old and deaf. <laughs> that sounds like me, Chrissy. Doesn't she actually make a noise like a baby, though, Chrissy? Yeah, she cries like a baby. Oh, cats. I've many a time been woken up in the middle of the night when I was younger and I didn't know any different and said, there's a baby crying outside. Somebody's abandoned the baby. <laughs> and it's obviously not. It's been a cat mewing. Right, come on, come on. Yes, listen to it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing Nick's puff pastry puffing up like <laughs> volcanoes. Come <laughs> to slow with custard. We want to see yours. <laughs> <laughs> Concentration going on. Will anybody be freezing any of these things for Christmas? Well, great idea. They freeze okay. They don't freeze brilliantly. They just freeze all right. Could you freeze them before they're cooked? Ooh, now there's an idea. I don't. I don't, th I don't think custard freezes well with, with uncooked. No. Yeah. Well, you buy them like that in the supermarket, don't you? What? Well, un Uncooked custard? I don't know. I thought you did. Mm. I had this conversation with my baking, um, you know, the bake off, my bake off people um, on our WhatsApp group when I was wanting to do something with some custard. And uh, they, they said, no, you don't. It'll split yeah. in the freezer. Well, that does make sense, doesn't it? Because you can't, uh, milk doesn't. Milk and cream don't freeze very well. Don't do, don't do, do they? But I always freeze, I always freeze my quiche, but I've never used any sort of spinach or kale elements. Yes. So maybe that goes a bit slimy, perhaps, does it? Doesn't slimy? I find that, I mean, it does, it freezes absolutely fine. And I have frozen them and eaten them and they've been delicious. But I can tell they're not as good. Yeah. It goes, I think that the, the whole filling goes slightly spongy. Um, right. So it's just, it doesn't go slimy, nothing goes slimy, but it just goes a little bit spongy, like it's absorbed a bit of water, if that makes sense. Um, so you can, you can, and I, I, I will pop, probably be free, yeah, there's only two of us. Yeah, 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 I mean, I'll I, so um, freeze some of ours. Don't tell anybody, nobody will know when they've had a few sherries. <laughs> but actually, I'm probably going to give mine to neighbours. We have a lovely street nice. here, and everybody is always. Um, if if you do, we have a street WhatsApp, and if you don't have enough ingredients, you just put a shout out, and it appears. Um, and I didn't have enough cheese for a cooking class on Tuesday, and I was too tired to go to the supermarket. <laughs> and my neighbours gave me a whole block of cheese, so they are going to get some of these quiches. That's back. brilliant. Yeah. 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 We did the same thing, Becky. Yeah. Yeah, and at the moment, going to the supermarket is like, oh, no, I'm going to the supermarket. So, um, yeah, if I can avoid it by just shopping at my neighbours' houses. 
Um, no, supermarket shopping is not the pleasure it was before lockdown, I find. I like to browse at leisure, but you're not allowed to, you know, you can't mill about, can you now? So it's not, it's not quite the same for me. And you can't pick up things and put them down again. No, oh, it's know? not, no. And you've got to avoid people and you're all sorry. And, oh, sorry, you know, get behind you in the queue. And, and I'm always yeah. apologising, saying I don't know the rules. I'm sorry, I don't want to do, you know, do. So, um, yeah, it's not, it's not that. Becky, how long are these quiches going in the oven for? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. We're kind of like an hour into our cook along. This is, I think, a record for us, actually. Sorry. Well, I've got a lot of the other chefs on who are doing the uh, Christmas cook along series. Maybe we could kind of say about what dishes we're going to be doing. Obviously, yeah, Karen. I'm about, you, to vegan, I'm about to do the vegan filling. Does everybody want to hear the vegan filling quickly? Okay. Sure. Yes. So here's your topping. I have squeezed this to get as much water out as possible, which is why it was wrapped in muslin, because it's a lot easier to squeeze in a muslin. So I'm literally just squeezing it like that. And I'm using 150 grams of topping. This will be enough for 12 of the mini quiches, I hope. If it's not, then do 200. <laughs> and then crumble up the tofu into i'm using a food processor i don't know how you would do this without a food processor you could but you grate you it. pardon would you grate it you would still end up you'll see in a minute karen you could still end up with a fairly grainy filling so um i would be tempted if i didn't have a food processor i'd be tempted to use silken tofu and to use a less cream and less um, milk. Okay. Right, so um, into my 150 grams of um, tofu is going a quarter of a teaspoon of black salt. Um, don't worry if you don't have black salt, just put in salt. <laughs> um, a few twists of black pepper. A quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric. Oh, now I can't find the turmeric. That will give it a nice colour, won't it? Yes, yes, I, I, I tidied it away. So the turmeric is basically just to colour it. And, you know, it has a flex some flavour as well. So a quarter of a teaspoon of the turmeric. And in goes the same amount of vegan cream as... 150 grams of, of vegan cream. Yeah. And And to begin with, it looks a bit grainy. But the longer you blend it, the less grainy it gets. I'm going to move that and blend it behind me. Otherwise, all you can hear is my blender. And then whilst that's blending, Nick, let's get other people to tell us about their, uh, their classes. Does anybody want to go first about their Christmas dishes? I don't mind going first. Go for it, Karen. So, so what date am I on? Is it the 14th of December, I think? Yeah, the, the second last one, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a very Christmassy thing. It's a very traditional thing, and it's um, delicious. It's the old Yule log, or as Victoria's lockdown there in the Pyrenees would call it, is a bouche de Noël. Oh, so nice. basically, <laughs> it's three components. We make a chocolate um, Swiss roll cake mixture. We make some beautiful chocolate ganache, which is just a mixture of chocolate and cream. But I'm going to be doing a chocolate orange, so I'll be using a little bit of orange essence. It's highly optional whether you flavour your bush orange. And then we'll be making, now this is the thing, we'll be making Swiss meringue buttercream. I'm now, excited I'm, about this, Karen. I don't know what that is. Well, I'm, I, I'm nervous only in that. It can be temperamental, but, uh, you know, if we follow the rules again, 
And all it is, we're making a, a meringue. We temper the egg white a little bit by warming it over a bain marie. That's all we're doing with that, with the sugar. And then we whisk that up like a regular meringue. And then you add a boatload of soft butter. And that eventually turns into the most silky, smooth buttercream that you've probably ever tasted in your life. And because it is not overloaded with icing sugar, it's not as sweet. Obviously, it's, it's got a lot of butter, so it's not a healthy option, but it's very light and beautiful. Flavour it how you like, we'll be doing an orange. Um, so that's it, and then we'll be, we'll be rolling the cream. We'll be putting the cream in, onto the sponge, rolling it up to make that lovely spiral. And then we'll be putting the chocolate log effect on there. And um, that's it. Sprig of holly. Well, it sounds divine, Karen. It is that divine. It looks gorgeous. beautiful. It does look beautiful. Um, yeah. So you need to have you need to have ready a flat lipped um, baking tray. Doesn't have to be a Swiss roll one specifically, but like an A4 size about. Um, and that's it. And a hand. And a hand mixer. Ideally, you'd use a stand mixer. That's it. Perfect. So ideally, you would use a stand mixer for the Swiss meringue buttercream. But I won't be using mine because I, I've practiced it with the hand one, and it, it came out okay. So don't worry if you. But you do need a a hand one. So that's me. And when is yours, Karen? Fourteenth of December. Oh, brilliant. And how long will it, will it keep? No, I'm just thinking of how close to Christmas is it? How long? Well, I, I mean, it, it, because it's got so much sugar in, the Swiss meringue buttercream keeps ages. Well, you know, relatively, it probably will be fine. But it's all in, it's encased in the chocolate ganache, which again keeps because that's the, the chocolate. I mean, I, I, I would actually recommend eating it before. I call that a practice run. Right. Um, and then make the make one at your leisure a few days before Christmas. And um, I'm sure it wouldn't poison you if it was two weeks old, but it'll be it won't be to the best, certainly. Um, so our next class, though, yes, it would freeze. I've never frozen it, but it should freeze. All the components freeze very well. Yeah. So our next class is Petra. Uh, obviously, she's not with us because she's at the market today. So next Saturday is actually going to be at five five p.m. Oh, right. And uh, that's going to be a Swedish Christmas casserole. So a Swedish dish. And then after that, I think is Victoria. Yeah. Victoria's. Yeah, hi. Hi. Yes, I'm doing a branded chestnut and mushroom treat, which is normally vegetarian, but it's really easy to make vegan. It's got... Um, Tarragon in it, obviously it's a French post there. <laughs> Tarragon, um, chestnuts, and it's a really nice Christmassy taste to do it. Can I ask you though, I, I, where would we hear by chestnut puree? Does anybody know? Um, I don't Buckets know. Do it. Oh. Who do? The supermarkets. I know I've seen it in Sainsbury's, so Have supermarkets you? do it. Where it, what, so how does it come? Is it in the is it in the ambient aisle or you know the dry stuff? Either, yeah, it's um it's sometimes it's with uh all the sort of what I call slightly exotic stuff, you know, sort of world food world type food. things, or with yeah, it'll be okay. There. Well, we've got um, enough you know, time. Um, yeah, I'd love to do that. So I'll definitely try to get hold of that. If you can't get hold of puree, um, if you can get hold of um, whole yes, no, they work as well. Just blended down with a little bit of milk. That's generally all the time as well. Superb. So, oh, you can back, yeah. Uh, so, you could, I've asked you if I could use ham instead, actually, Victoria, and you, yeah. you know, okay? I think so, yes. Um, Obviously, one wouldn't be vegetarian, but. Well. <laughs> ben might be with me as well. <laughs> <laughs> so after Victoria, is it uh, Marnie? Remind me. Um, who is it next? Hello, Nick. Nick, I think I'm next. Oh, Ben, of course. Nick, I think I'm I'm next. Well, I'm going to cook a glazed 
cranberry and thyme turkey dish, but it's going to, it's not going to be the whole turkey, just going to use turkey fillets. So it's going to be quite a nice, you know, supper evening dish. I'm going to do a few side dishes, a cauliflower gratin, and I'm going to show you maybe one or two different ways of cooking sprouts. Fab! Oh, yes, people, I love sprouts. People always moan about sprouts, and I'm not a big fan, but I find if you cook them with some other ingredients, they can be really tasty. Mm. Fabulous. Now, you asked me earlier about the barbecue. There Here it we is. go. There it is. Oh, wow. It's... It folds down. There's um, a handle here, but it's, yes, it's quite good, quite portable. You put your, your charcoal or your wood in there and you can cook and, you know, you can cook for up to about four people with that. And, that's, and how, that's how much does that rate? Does it, do you sell that on its own though as well? Yes, I do. Um, that I think it retails currently for $14.99. That's nothing. Um, that's amazing. That, and... I will, we've got Black Friday coming up. I will be doing um, a voucher. Um, so I'll let everyone know what that is. So if you do want one for Christmas, um, it, what comes boxed up and for Christmas, you know, I can gift wrap it. I can put in a card for you. And yeah, a, a really nice practical barbecue. Yeah. Very cute. Yeah, so I, Lovely yeah, and very reasonable price as well, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What a great Christmas idea. So, currently, we're doing our number five, episode five, and our final one is going to be Chrissy doing mince pies. Oh, yes. And it's me with the mince pies. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's a nice, sweet pastry. It's quite a short pastry. It's quite crispy, and, and it's, um, of course, it's got. Um, uh, citrus zest and things in it so that gives it a lovely Christmassy flavour so uh, I will what I will do is I will um, run through making the pastry but you could make your pastry um, you know beforehand and chill it uh, so I'll go through the pastry and uh, and I'll also go through how you would make your own mincemeat I mean I've made mine now but um, you know it does I've got some that's you know goes to two years and I every now and again I when I go there, I'll stick a little brandy in, delicious mince pies. They can be frozen or, you know, heated up in the oven. If you're making them in the, on the 19th, which is when we're doing this, they'll be um, good for, for the week. And you, if you make the mince meat uh, beforehand, Chrissy, you have to let it mature, do you? Uh, it's not, yeah, I mean, it's, you could use it. It'll still be lovely, but it'll be far better left to mature because it starts to steep and it starts to um you know all those flavors sort of uh, you absorb each other there's brandy in it and the juice of the citrus in it and it's just a lovely flavor so of course it's like anything the longer you keep it that the nicer the flavor is it is okay it's great i'm doing a class in two weeks time with bake with a legend with mince pies and everybody's making their their mince meat at that yeah. point of making it. And, and, and it'll class... be delicious, Karen. And then it'll be it's even more fine. delicious when you've got left over. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. Best of both worlds. Yes. Well, well you ladies so are all... I, I don't, obviously, we're doing the Christmas series now and looking forward a little bit, we were thinking that maybe a student version would be a good idea. Yes. So yeah, great idea. The new year, we do, like, cheap dishes for students. Not and just then, students. In the new year, we've none of us got any money left. Yeah. And do you know what? I'm thinking about Barbecue Ben here because one of the things I taught my daughters before they went to university is how don't go and buy chicken breasts or bits of meat because that's more expensive. Get a whole chicken and divide it up. And I think somebody, like, I, I would just thought of you, Ben, but, you know, how to cut up and section a chicken into various parts and different meals. You can get a lot of meals from one chicken and then you're left with your carcass and you can make soup. And, and you know, we all know how versatile and cheap soups are. Go and get your cheap veg, end of range stuff, selling off stuff, make a nice soup. So I think students could learn a lot from that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You can turn that one chicken or that turkey into... Lots of things, curries, um, casseroles, soups, um, 
using lower cost meats, you know, maybe tougher muscles that take a, a bit longer to cook, brisket, pork shoulder, um, yeah, uh, chicken, turkey, there's lots of meats um, and fish as well. So yeah, we'll come up with some great ideas for you. Yeah, and a lot of students have a freezer, don't they? So they can do batches of meals and, and freeze them and just get them out before they go, well, if they are able to go to their lectures, but you know, by the time they come in, they can stick it in the microwave or the oven. Perfect. And we need a lot of one pot meals as well because students won't have a full kitchen. They'll be making things in halls of residence or little tiny kitchens in there. Nobody's done the washing up, so everything's yeah. in the sink. Yeah. yeah. I remember. Sounds like my house. Like, just <laughs> just me. like I'll sign into these. <laughs> right. I think they're going to be one of the audience in that series. So, so uh, ladies, if you if you want to uh, submit any recipes, send in your recipes for the student ideas, and we'll maybe package this one up a bit early. Maybe we can offer it as a Christmas gift. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Well, I would, I'd, like I said, I've got a lovely rice dish that my mum sent me away with that um, can be uh, cooked up or cooked down. Now I would make it and I make my own stock. <laughs> <laughs> but I can teach students how to make their own vegetable stock for nothing as well. Right, here are the vegan quiches about to go in the oven. So you can see that the egg filling is um, a tofu base, but I must say, when you do the vegan ones, it's best to mix the filling in with the tofu, otherwise you'll get a quiche that just looks like that. Mm -hmm. so, so there's no egg There's no egg supplement here then, nothing like that? No. Nope. Wow. And do just they cook for the same amount of time, Becky? A little bit longer. I mean, to be honest, I said that they, they, they needed 15 minutes and these ones have needed 20. Um, and these ones will need about 25. 25. Fabulous. Yeah. And I'll just pop those in and get the other ones out. Well, as we're uh, coming to the end, shall everyone, uh, shall we have a look in everyone's ovens and see how the quiches are doing? And maybe... I, want to see, I want to see yours, Nick, first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pastry quiche. The controversial one. By the way, yeah, these, are, <laughs> these, are, ready yet. these are two of the vegan ones that I made yesterday, last night. Oh, yeah. So you can see what they look like. That look lovely, Becky. Hey. Oh, hey. Get them out. Yeah. Let's have them out. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a savoury Portuguese tart, Nick. I was just going to say that, Marnie. Yes. Well, they look like the same what? Oh, very oh, nice. Oh, they look lovely, Ben. Well, mine aren't ready yet. Nice. Oh, that looks good, Victoria. You never put your top on. To... <laughs> I'm really looking forward to these. Ben, how are you? Ooh, well, they look good. They're a lovely colour. They are know, golden. They're, they're wonderful. I love the contrast. Yeah, yeah, these really ones beautiful. were the kale and herb and uh, <laughs> lovely colour and the others, they've got they've gone a bit more golden. I think the cheese um, yeah. helped like with the that. I like golden look. Yeah. Mm. And then if you imagine those on a plate mm. next to each other, you'll get those lovely um, colours. They look very marish. <laughs> they look good too. Oh, wow, Marnie. Yes, yours will need a little bit longer, but they look Sometimes if you've filled them quite well, 
like I have with this middle one. Can you see what I said about it gets welded in? Yeah. You yeah. overfill it. Um, Those sometimes you need a little bit of um, encouragement to come out of the tray. Mm -hmm. And you're better off encouraging them with something plastic. So should I leave it to cool before I try to take it out? Or can I, when I come out, I take it out from the oven, I can sort of try to get it out straight away. Um, I would just let, let, leave them like about five minutes and then get them out. Don't let them cool in the tray because then they could set in the tray and be even harder to get out. So you need to just okay. give them five minutes just for the just to set. Um, but get them out while they're still warm. Yeah, I think this is brilliant. I think I'm so pleased that we get the first uh, episode done and it's uh, kind of ready for my lunch as well. So, um, is there anything that we have to uh, do or to say, Nick? Well, if everybody sends in their photos on the WhatsApp group as well, that would be lovely. Thank you, Victoria. And um, I sh well, we'll see you all next Saturday, five o'clock next Saturday, you remember? So, Marnie, would you like to wrap it up? Yeah, so thank you very much, everyone, to be here for us today. And thank you so much, Becky to uh, make a kickstart for us today. It's fantastic. Um, I would say that if you guys would like to share um, to, uh, you know, to photo your photos on uh, social media would be great as well to encourage others to join us. And um, you got a new website come up live, mm -hmm. isn't it, um, uh, Nick? Yeah, the new website's live as well. Um, we are selling these cook-alongs, but um, I might shelve that and then we'll save it to sell the, the student version as a, a Christmas gift. All right. I thought that you, you, you're going to try to do like um, sell one episode from now on. Well, yeah, we could do that actually, yeah. Nick, you may as well carry on because you've only had a week so far publicising it. You may as well carry on. If you don't get anything, nobody needs to know that, do they? I know, but we, we like going live on YouTube as well, don't we? Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah. You can't do both, it's really. It's amazing how many people I got. I found out today that other people have been watching us that I had no idea of, and they're all over the world. I've got yeah. some in the village as well, Chrissy, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, actually. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for today. I will see you next week. Um, is it with Petra at 5 p.m.? Yep. Yes, and she's going to uh, teach us, she's going to tell her recipe for us. It is a, a Swedish type of gratin potato. Look, oh, oh, that looks fantastic, Ben. I'm so envious. The color is amazing. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed. So wow. Great oh, recipe. Yeah, beautiful, Ben. Thank yeah. you. Can take anyone take a scary photo for now? Got it. Yeah. Can Everybody you do that? Bye. 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 <laughs> okay. See you next.